right? So, so our guide for, for moral judgments is going to be, is this, is, is this conjugal? Is, is it based on complementarity, fidelity and permanence, and openness to the transmission of new life? And all those things go together in the nature of, of what it means to be a person, what it means to be a man or a woman, what it means to have sexuality, and the ability to engage in sexual intimacy. So we ask ourselves, well then, if this is God's plan, if conjugal union is so uh, kind of restricted uh, from a certain way of looking at it, I would reject that way of looking at it, but we go with the culture, right? If, if sexual union is restricted to just men and women, uh, then why did God make homosexual persons, right? This is a very real question. Uh, I remember um, one morning shortly after I arrived at the parish where I live now, uh, a parishioner of ours came up to me after Mass and said, I heard you work for courage. I said, that's right. She said, I think that's great for people who need it. My son, he's very happy with his partner, so he doesn't need it. But it's great that you're doing what you're doing. And I smiled and said, thank you, and thought, I'm not getting into this at, eight, at 10 after 8 on a Tuesday morning. <laughs> and then she said, God made him that way. I didn't make him that way. Right? The question of where homosexuality comes from uh, is, is, is a very profound and, and often mysterious one. And we're going to spend some time in our other talks today exploring that more fully. But I think we have to say from a theological point of view right, uh, that it's not possible for us to, to, to say that God makes somebody to be gay, that God creates a person with homosexual inclinations. Because one of two things would have to follow from that. Either God has created a different kind of human being than he did at the beginning, right? From, from the perspective of faith, the story of creation and, and the church's reflection on it shows us that, that there is one plan for all human beings based on complementarity, uh, permanence, fidelity that lead to union, right? If we were to say that God makes some people uh, to walk a different path, that he has approved, then he's changed the rules. He's changed the story, but hasn't revealed it to us, right? It, he changed it sometime after he inspired the sacred author to write that down for us. And, and, and God doesn't work like that. The other possibility is that the, the original plan is still in force, right? That, that, that the plan of God for human relationships and for human intimacy is exactly what we've been talking about. And then we would have to say that God sets some people up for their entire life with unfulfillable desires. That he sets them up at least to be frustrated if not to fail. And that's not the God that we believe in. Okay? So we have to reject uh, what's becoming a more and more current uh, hypothesis in, in, in Catholic theology uh, that, that, human, that, that homosexual people, people who experience homosexual inclinations, somehow have a different kind of human nature and therefore a different kind of morality attached to their, their actions, their desires, their relationships. If there's one thing that we, we want to walk away with today, if, trying to understand where is the church coming from, what, how does the church want us to think about these things, it, it, I think it's best expressed in, in, a, in something that the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith said in 1986. The human person made in the image and likeness of God can hardly be adequately described by a reductionist reference to his or her sexual orientation. The church provides a badly needed context for the care of the human person when she refuses to consider the person as a homosexual or a heterosexual and insists that every person has the same fundamental identity, to be a creature and by grace a child of God and heir to eternal life. So first point of Christian anthropology, the person is created in the image and likeness of God. The person is created male or female on purpose by God. The, the complementarity among men and women allows for sexual union, which is an image in the world of God's love for us. For that union to be, to be what God wants it to be, it has to be permanent, faithful, based on complementarity and open to life. And that when we follow that path, when we understand it and, and, and cho make choices that go along with that, we find our, our, the fulfillment of our dignity and our destiny. We find human flourishing and happiness. And that to, to kind of short circuit that explanation by saying, I'm a different kind of person. I'm defined by my, my sexual desires. Uh, what you're talking about doesn't apply to me because I'm not attracted to that. Right? To do that to another person or to let a person define himself or herself in that way does a disservice to the human person.